Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very special shiur tonight. Something that the likes of it, not every day do we give. An amazing shiur about the coming of Mashiach and the role that Klal Yisrael plays on the bringing of that great moment, the tikkun to the world. I want to make it very clear from the get-go that the wonderful Mar Mekomot tonight come from a shiur from the great Baal Magid Harakia, the great uh, rabbi, Rabbi Daniel Gladstein, Yididi Ahuvi, Shem Shablesim, when Arichut Yami Bishanim. He's actually in the middle of a campaign now, uh, looking to build a building for his shul that's going to be a headquarters to dispense unbelievable Torah all over the world. If you're a smart businessman and you want a good investment, there's no question that to support such a building fund that's going to be the headquarters to send Torah all over the world is an investment for life. So let's begin tonight, Shiur. We just read, Ubishnat Hayovel Hazot, Tashuvu Ish El In the 50th year, in the Jubilee year, in this great year, something incredible takes place. All the karkaot, all the land, goes back and returns to the original owners. But it's interesting that when the Torah talks about this year of Yovel, it uses the term, the word, hazot. Bishnat hayovel hazot. This one, what's going to happen? Tashuvu. Man is going to go back to his place, his land, the place he belongs. Amazing. The lands are going to return. The people are going to return. Over here in this word, there is something of a hidden gem. This is brought to us by the Zohar HaKadosh in Parashat Toldot. The Zohar is found on page Kuflamid Tet, Parashat Toldot, that the Zohar tells us about the great Rebel Azar ben Arach, for those of you who have been following Perkei Avot, you know that the great rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, had five Talmidim, and he told over the incredible Shevach, the great praises of his students. And the greatest, number one, was Rabbi Lazar ben Arach. And what was the praise that he gave him? He called him a bore, a well, a ditch. Shalom ma'abed tipah. It doesn't, he doesn't lose a drop. A drop of Torah. Whatever he learned in his life, he never forgot. Now listen to what the Zohar HaKadosh tells us in Parashat Toldot. It tells us that Rabbi Lazar ben Arach was sitting, and who comes and visits him? Rabbi Yoshua. And Rabbi Yoshua says, Rabbi Lazar ben Arach, you are the light onto the generation. You are the greatest of the great. And yet, I see that you're so sad. Why? Why are you so sad? So the Zohar tells us, Rabbi Lazar ben Arach answers. He says, I can see the great moment of the time and the year that Mashiach is going to come. But I'm so broken that it is so far, <laughs> so down the line. It is such a long, far stretch of a wait. He says, how could we wait that long? How could it be such a long stretch? He says, how is Klal Yisrael going to endure such a long wait? Could they be machzik ma'amad? Can they hold out such a long distance of time? And then finally, Zohar HaKadosh turns around and says, and he says, and that length is going to last until the Shekhinah is going to be raised up from the dust, from the dirt, in the year of the sixth millennium, the year 408. And that's the time that Mashiach is going to come. And then he supports this. Where does he get this from? From the Pasuk. Says Zohar HaKadosh, Dichtiv, Ahainu Dichtiv, like the Pasuk says, as we just read in Parashat Behar, Ubishnat Hayovel Hazot. What is the word Hazot? Hazot. 500, 5,000 rather, 
408. 5408. Hazot. Zot. Zot is 508. It's the year of Tach. In that year, what's going to happen, says the Pasuk, in, ha, in, in Bishnat HaYovel Hazot? Tashuvu. We're all going to go home. Ish al We're all going to go back to the place we belong, to Eretz Yisrael. We're going to return to our lands. Our land will return back to us. We will go back home to the place we belong. Says the Zohar HaKadosh, in the name of the great Rabbi Lazar ben Arach, a secret, the secret of all time, the greatest secret of history, the secret of when Mashiach is going to come. What year? Sixth millennium. And the year 408. Hazot 5, 4, 8. Or in terminology of years, it's the year of Taf Chet. Tach. You might want to know what the English year is. 1648. The year Tach. That's the year 5408. The year of Tach Vitat. Mashiach is going to come. So says Azor HaKadosh, bases it on the Pasuk. Bishnat Hayovel Hazot. Zot is 408. Tach. Tavchet. That's the year Mashiach is going to come. That's the year of the Geulah. Amazing. And the truth of the matter is that the great Rabbi Avram Azulai in his Sefer Orachama, Rabbi Avram Azulai, he was the great grandfather of none other than the Chida. You remember two weeks ago we gave a class that the name Azulai really is Rashi Tevot, Isha, Zona, Vachalala, Lo Yikachu. That was a name that was given and adopted from the families of Kohanim to tell you that they were Kohanim. The Chida, right? The Chida was Chaim Yosef David Azulai. His great-grandfather was Rabbi Avraham Azulai, who wrote many Svarim. One of the Svarim is Orachama. Over there, Rabbi Avraham Azulai writes an amazing thing. Not only, according to the Zohar that we just read in Parashat Shemot, based on the Pasuk of that, this week's parasha, the Pasuk of Hazot, that Mashiach is going to come, the year of Yovel, the year of Geula, is going to be the year of Hazot, the year of 408, Tach. That's going to be the year of Tashuvu. That's going to be the year that we're all going to go home. That's going to be the year we're going to get our land back. We're going to, we're going to go back to our land. But not only that, says Rabbi Avraham Azulai, he writes, that there were many kitzim, many different opportunities along the way that Mashiach was able to come. But this one, the one that Rabbi Lazar ben Arach, the Zohar just told you about, that is the final catch. The last stop, the last call, the last train. That's what he writes. He writes that this is going to be it. He, listen to these words. Should I read it to you inside? Maybe, you know, maybe we got to hear this. He says it very clearly. He says, unbelievable. He'elimu kitzenu, he says. All the other kitzim, they were hidden from us. Velo ha'richu. Avalimu ad shia oro nistar ad et ketz. Velo ya'avor. And it will not pass. Mishnat tach. It will not go past this last ketz of the coming of Mashiach. The one that was mentioned in the Zohar. The one of Hazot, Tach, 408. The year of Tach Vitat. That's the final ketz that Mashiach is going to come. Wow, this is amazing. So the Zohar tells us, or for the Pasuk of this week's parasha, that when's Mashiach going to come? In the year of 408, in the 6th millennium. Better known as Tach. Tach Vitat. Says Rabbi Avraham Azulai, not only is that going to be the year of Mashiach coming, but that's the last Ketz. The last of the Kitzim of the coming of Mashiach. That's it. Final call. Guys, there's only one really big problem. That year came, and that year went over 400 plus years ago. The year 1648, long, long ago. And if that's the case, what happened? What happened? 
why did Mashiach come? The Zohar HaKadosh, black and white. Look up the Zohar in Parashat Todot, page Kuf Lamitet. you can't miss it. The piece on Rebbe Lazar ben Arach, you'll see it, black and white, off of the Pasuk in this week's parasha. Bishnat HaYovel, Hazot, that's the year of Yovel, the year of Geula. Says Rebbe Avram Zulai, and that's the last shot. So what happened? The year came, and the year went. Ve'enenu. And we're still sitting in Galut. Madua ben David lo ba. What happened here? And once we're asking, not looking to add pain to pain, but once we're asking such a compelling question, we need to up the ante and ask even better. Do you know what those years of 1648, 1649, better known as Tach Vitat, the year of Zot, do you know what did happen in that year? In that year was the Chalmaniski pogroms. In that year was one of the worst massacres of millions of Jews that were slaughtered, bloodbaths of cities and towns. There was a Nahar, a river of blood that came out of Ukraine. It started in Ukraine. You know Ukraine? The place that we're hanging up our flags in solidarity, <laughs> right? Tach v'tat. There isn't an inch of the land in Ukraine that isn't soaked with Jewish blood. It started then. The massacres of Chalmaniski. It went across Europe, murdered millions of Jews. It was one of the worst Periods of a galut. It was so bad that not only were they being murdered right and left, but they were taking their own lives. The women of Klal Yisrael were taking their lives not to be violated by the Goyim. The children of Klal Yisrael were taking their own lives not to be abducted and taken away and converted. This was one of the worst periods of the history of Klal Yisrael. It was one of the worst and darkest moments of Galut. What's going on? But, but that was supposed to be the year that Mashiach was supposed to come. The Zohar HaKadosh told us, Bezot, Bezot Yavo Aaron El HaKodesh, Bishnat HaYovel Hazot. This is going to be the year that Aharon, the Kohen Gadol, was supposed to come back to the Kodesh, where we were supposed to bring back a Kohen Gadol to the Bet HaMikdash. Bezot yavo Aharon el HaKodesh. Says David HaMelech, Bezot ani boteach. In the year of Zot, I am relying and boteach. The Mashiach is coming. The, the Zohar HaKadosh tells us, from Elazar ben Arach, Bishnat HaYovel Hazot. You want to know the year of Yovel? The final Geula, Mashiach. The year of Tashuvu, the year that we all return back to our land, to Eretz Yisrael, it's the year of Hazot. And instead of Mashiach coming in that year of Tach 408, the opposite. Not only didn't the dead come back to live, the living, the living were slaughtered dead. That's one thing for Mashiach not to come, but Mamash the opposite. So Rabbi Gladstein, with his magnificent array of Mar Mikomot, brings you a sefer, Meloha Omer, that's found in Aleph Gimel and Esther. And he says something very interesting. He says, you know, when there's an opportunity in Et Ratzon for Mashiach to come, if we don't bring him, there's a big time on us. Ah. If we are able to bring him and we don't, there's a big time on the Jewish people. And then he says an unbelievable idea. Listen to this idea. He says, the Yetzer Hara knows good and well what's going on. And the Yetzer Hara, the Samach Mem, he knows the famous Gemara and Sukkah, that the minute Mashiach comes, he is the first one to be slaughtered. So when he hears that there's an Etrat son and the kits of Mashiach is on the brink, and Mashiach might actually come, 
He works overtime. He works double time to bring out all the Averot and all the sins of Klal Yisrael. And he prosecutes such a prosecution and he gives it all he got because his neck is on the line. And when he brings such an overwhelming prosecution to Klal Yisrael, if Has Shalom, we don't hold steadfast and we falter, that prosecution overtakes us. And not only doesn't Geula come to Klal Yisrael, but destruction comes to Klal Yisrael. Hence the years, Tach Vetat. Hence the years, 1648, where there was a great opportunity for Mashiach. There was an amazing Etrat Son. But because of that, the Etzer Hara prosecuted Ad Lashamayim, and instead it turned into terrible bloodbath of massacres. But you have to understand something. Even the great Geonim, Sadikim Gedolim, were banking on that year. If I could just read you an excerpt from the Sefer of the great Shach, you have to understand, in that year of Tach Vetat, there were two great giants. And at the end of today's class, I'm going to tell you of a story that I'm hoping is going to blow your mind. It's a story of the way Rabbi Issa Zalman Meltzer, Zechit Sadik Lebracha, used to give over this Maisa. This is a story that every single Ben Torah must know. He must know this to understand what it means, what it means to be a Lomed Torah, what it means to be a Ben Torah. What are you connected to? What are you learning? We're going to get to it in a moment. But there were two great rabbis, two giants in that generation. The Shach, Reb Shabti Kohen, and the great Kabbalist, Reb Shamshim Ashtrapoli. Wow, these were two giants. Klal Yisrael, we know both of them well. The Shach, I mean, how could, how could you learn a Shulchan Aruch without the Shach? The Shach is the predominant posek that we run like all over Choshe Mishpat, all over Yeridea. I mean, without the Shach, we don't have a Shulchan Aruch. The Shach lived in that generation, and the great Kabbalist, Reb Shamshin Ashtrapoli, two giants. The Shach writes, in his Sefer, Megillat Ef. Listen to the words. I'm going to read you. This is a quote, the way Rabbi Gladstein brought it on his sheet. I want you to hear this. Ushnat Tach, which we said in English, 1648. The year that the Zohar said, Mashiach is coming. Listen to what the, listen to what the Shach says. Ushnat Tach, Asher Chashavti, says the Shach. I thought, Bezot, that in the year Zot, in the year 408, in the year Tach, Aharon, the Kohen Gadol, is going to come back to the Kodesh HaKodashim, because the Bet HaMikdash is going to be rebuilt that year. That's the year Mashiach is coming. And then says the Shach, listen to these words, Nehepach kinori le'ebel, my happiness turned into Avelut, v'samachti, v'simchati ligonim, and my happiness, my simcha, turned into sadness. Tiyagon. Vikrivu et olatam ha Yisraelim, halviim va kohanim. Instead of bringing korbanot, who became the korbanot? The people, the Bnei Israel, the people themselves. But do you, you hear who's talking here? This is the Gadol Ador. This is the Gadol Ador. This is the Shach. This is the Shach from Shulchan Aruch. And the Shach is saying, I really thought that this year, Tach, the way it was brought in the Zohar, the way Rabbi Avram Azulai, who told us that this is the last of all the Kitzim, no question that that's the year Mashiach is going to come. And he says, instead, what happened? Exactly the opposite. Instead of bringing Korbanot, Lebet HaMikdash, the people were the Korbanot. Ay, 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 what, what, what took place? But Hare, didn't the Zohar say so? How did this go down? How do you explain this? How do you explain this? Yeah, the year 408. Rabotai, listen to this. Open your hearts. There were one of the Baaletos Afot who became very famous on a specific piece that he wrote that was adopted into the Roshanan Kippur davening of the Ashkenazim in Musaf 
And even the Svaradim adopted some of the Lashon in the Nusach of the High Holidays as well. I'm referring to the piece of Reb Amnon, who wrote the classical Unutane Tokef. Unusane Tokef is the way the Ashkenazim, they shake, I remember, years growing up in the Mir Yeshiva. My father is the Baltakea Adayom in the Yeshivat Mir in, 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 in Brooklyn. And we would sit there and tremble. I can tell you stories. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Reb Label Birnbaum. Was a tzaddik, he was a kadosh, he was a malach Hashem. He sat two seats over next to us on the same row. Yeah. Rabbi Ginsburg sat right behind us and you had to hear him, David. Right in front of us was the great Harav Brudni of the Muri Yeshiva. And two rows looking right at us from Shmuel Birnbaum with all the greats of the previous generation of the Altamirs. I remember. I remember those years growing up. We didn't get out till 3.30 in the afternoon. Because when they cried, they davened with all their heart. To daven in the yeshiva is wow. And you could never forget the Nisan Tokef of the Mur Yeshiva. And listen to the words of the piyut. Utshuva, utfila, utzdaka. Ma'avirin et roa ha do you want to know the recipe that allows Gezerot to be pushed away? Teshuvah, Tefillah, Uzdaka. This is a three-punch recipe that together pushes Gezerot and saves people from Gezerot Menash Shamayim. Now, whether the word Ma'avirin means that it pushes it away, or whether it means that it allows it to pass over the person that was gozer de gezerah on in a much softer way. Hamtakat hadinim. That it waters it down and it allows it to slide off of the person in a much softer rachmanudik way rather than in the original gezerah form. All that is good. But at the end of the day, this is the recipe. The recipe is again, utshuva, utfila, utzdaka. Ma'avirin et roah gezerah. And the truth of the matter is, the Midrash, way before Reb Amnon, already said this idea. That if someone wants to be saved from gezerot in Shamayim, says the Midrash, kifot, let him jump, l'shlosha dvarim. The three things. Va'ata nitzal mehen. And then you'll be saved from the gezerot of Shamayim. And what are these three things? The Amar Reb Yudin B'Shem Reb Ezer. This doesn't say Ma'avirin. The Medrash says Mevatelin, Milashon Batel. It actually breaks it. It's Mevatel it. Mevatelin Gizerot Raot. Ve'eluhen. Tefilat Sedaka Utshuva. So this is where he got it. Utshuva, Utfila, Utzdaka, Ma'avirin et Roa Hagizera. That's the recipe to break Gizerot. And to get them to pass off of you. Amazing. Now, if you take a better look in the Machzor, the way Rabbi Amnon gave over the peace to Klal Yisrael on the Tefilot of the High Holidays, on top of these three words, there are three very small words. On the top of the word Teshuvah, there's a very small word that says Tzom. On top of the word tefillah, there's a small word that says kol. Very good, Yaakov. On top of the word sedaka, small word that says mamon. Oh, so even the Sfaradim know this, you see. <laughs> they know it by heart. But this is very, shovavim is true, very good. So take a look. It's such an interesting thing, you know. Tshuva. On top of it, tzom. Tefillah, kol. Tzedaka, mamon. What's these three highlights on top of the actual words of the three-point recipe that breaks Gezerot from Shammai? I mean, really? Tshuva is just song? There's more to Tshuva than song. Tefillah kol? Okay. Kishomea kol tefillat? Okay. Maybe kol is part of tefillah, no question. Uzdaka mamon. 
Do I need a translation? Is this what this was trying to do here? This was the first linear art scroll translation that we're trying to bring back to you what the words mean so that you really tap into them and break the Gezerot. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great idea. But what, what, what are these three highlighted words on top of the mainstay, Teshuvat, Filat, Sedaka, Tzom, Kol, Mamon? What is this? There's a secret here behind these words. The secret was told to us by the Rebbe Reb Herschel. Reb Herschel who was the predecessor, he's the one who took over the Megale Amukot as the rabbi of the city of Krakow. Rabbi Herschel tells us a secret. And before I tell you that secret, I got to tell you a little history because it's awesome. <laughs> they came to the Megale Amukot. The Megale Amukot. And they said to him, who's going to take you over? Who's going to be the next rabbi in line to be the chief rabbi of the city of Krakow, who's going to take your seat? And the Megale Amukot says, you don't know? It's a Pasuk Mefurash and Torah. They said, really? Who? Rebbe Herschel. Rebbe Herschel. Yeah. Rebbe Herschel me Krakow. It's a Pasuk Mefurash. Where do you see in the Pasuk Rebbe Herschel is going to be the chief rabbi of Krakow? He says, what do you mean? The Pasuk says, Hineni omed sham lefanecha al hatzur. Hineni omed sham lefanecha rashe tevot Herschel al hatzur gematria Krakow. It's a shayla. What, what? You're asking? Anyway, it's a Pasuk Mefureshet, said the Megale Amukot. Yeah. To the Megale Amukot, it's a Pasuk Mefureshet. That's why he was able to be Megale Amukot. So here is the Rebbe of Herschel. Rebbe Herschel was a great Gaon. He was the predecessor who took over the Megale Amukot as the rabbi in Krakow. And he's the one that tells us the secret about these three high, highlighted words on top of Utshuva, Utfila, Utzdaka. What is this? Utshuva, Tsom, Tfila, Kol, Zdaka, Mamon. What is this? Uh, kol. What is this tzom? What is this mamon? What's it coming to tell us? He says something amazing. This is found in the Sefer Chanukat Torah. In the name of Herschel, listen to this. And he says the following. He says, tzom, gematria. 96, 40, 136. Tzom, 136. Kol, 136. Mamon, I have to roll on that one. 136. He says, each one is 136. What is it coming to tell me? Very good, Yaakov. Tzom, 136. Kol, 136. Mamon, 136. 136 times 3, 408. The year 408. Psh, bizot. Yavo Aaron el HaKodesh. In the year 408. In the year of Tzom. In the year of Kol, in the year of Tzedakah Mamon, Aharon is supposed to come back to the Bet HaMikdash because that's the year the Mashiach is supposed to come. Bezot, ubishnat hayovel, hazot, in the year 408. The year that what? The year that's made up of Tzom, Kol, Mamon, Utshuva, Utfila, Utzdaka, Ma'avirin et Ra'agizera. That's the year that Mashiach is supposed to come. Tashuvu. We're going to go home that year. It's the year of the going home. It's the year of the 408. Said Rav Herschel, that's where you made your mistake. Tshuva, Tfila, Utzdaka. Tzom, Kol, Mamon. 136, 136, 136, they equal to 408. If, if you have Chuvat Filat Sedaka, Tsom Kol Mamon, 408, then yes, in the year 408, he would have came. But if you don't have the recipe to bring Mashiach, no kids can bring him. And he says, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Do you remember the famous Gemara in Sanhedrin in Chelek? The Gemara tells us Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. My family comes from Yeshua ben Levi on my father's side. We have such a tradition. 
He was a Levi, as we are. <laughs> Do you remember the Gemara Rabbi Yeshua? Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi came to Meron. Oh, in Yad Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi came to Meron. He came to the Rajbi. To the Rajbi's Kever, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. And he bumped into, Mel and he bumped into Elion Avi. And he said to Elion Avi, Madua ben David Loba. What's taking so long? Why is a Mashiach coming? So you know what he told him? Go ask. Go ask him. He told him where to find Mashiach. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi went out and he found Mashiach where he was told he would find him. And he sees that he's sitting there wrapped in Sarat, wrapped in bandages from the Tzarot of Klal Yisrael and he's crying. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi turns to Melech HaMashiach and he says to him, Madua ben David, Madua Taloba. Then he says to him, Matai, when are you coming? Mashiach looks up at Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi and tells him, Hayom, I'm coming today. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi heard that. Ah, he started dancing. He started dancing. But a dance that only a Jew who waited for Mashiach could possibly give up such a dance. And he danced his way all the way back, all the way back to Meron, the way the Midrash brings the story, a little bit different than the Gemara. And there in Meron, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi was dancing, he's coming today! I spoke to him, I met him, he told me, Hayom! Hayom! And then that day came, and that day went, and he didn't come. What happened? He told me today, he told me Hayom. He told me, I am. So Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi goes running back to the place that he met Mashiach. And he came back to him and he said, what happened? Now Rabotai, I could never, God forbid, has shalom to say such a thing. But he, he, you have to hear the way the Gemara brings it. Hadar, Amar, he came back to Mashiach and he said, Shikurei kamishakre ana. <laughs> you, I'll just say, you're joking with me, right? That's the, the, night, the right way to say it. You're joking, or you were joking me? He said a stronger lash on. But you're joking me? He said, well, I don't get it. You told me Hayom. He said, Mashiach, yes. But you didn't understand. When I told you Hayom, I meant the Pasuk. Hayom in Bikolo Tishmao. You want to know the Hayom? You want to know the Hayom Harat Olam? You can't give a birthday to it. Because it's dependent on the recipe of Teshuvah, Tefillah, Tzedakah, Ma'avirin et Roa, Hagalut. That's what brings the Geulah. Hayom. What's the day? In Bikolo Tishma'u. If you do the recipe, if you finally do Tshuva, the day you do the Teshuvah is the day I come. Forget about the Kitsim. Forget about the birth dates. You want to know the Yom? Of the Geula Shulema, the Hayom, it's the Yom of the Kol Tzom Umamon. That's the 408. The 408 wasn't a year. The 408 was a recipe. It was a recipe of the three things needed to bring Mashiach. And that's why, writes from Herschel, Reb Amnon, the great Baal Tosafot, right on top of the word of Tshuva, he writes Tzom. Right on top of the word Tfilah, he writes Kol. Right on top of the word Tzedakah, he writes Mamon. To tell you, listen, these three add up to 136, 136, 136. To tell you that that's the real 408. The real 408, the real Tach. The real 408 didn't mean as a date. It meant the recipe of how to bring him, not the date that he's coming. The day that you do 408, that's the day he's going to come. The day that you do tzom, kol, mamon, shuvat, filat, tzedakah, that's the day he's coming. That's the hayom in bikolot yishma'u. And if this is the case, says Rabbi Herschel, Something that has to make your heart skip for a moment. Listen the way he's going to explain the words that David HaMelech. Me'et Hashem Ha'ita Zot. 
It was from Hashem, the year of Zot. We were all waiting in that year, the year of 408, the year that we thought Mashiach was going to come, the year that the Zohar told us he's coming, the year that Rabbi Abraham Azulai told us is the last Ketz of Mashiach, the year that the Shach wrote, I expected him to come in this year, Tach, 408, the year of Zot. Me'it Hashem, Ha'ita Zot. This was the year from Hashem that we were going to get a Geula, the year that Mashiach was supposed to come. And what ended up happening? He niflat be'eneinu. And it was hidden from our eyes. It became a pele. A pele. Niflat be'eneinu. It became a pele in our eyes. Instead of Mashiach coming, the opposite. The Chalmaniski massacres. The pogroms, the, the, the bloodbaths of Jews, oceans and rivers of Jewish blood. What happened? That's the year of Zot. Me'et Hashem ha'ita Zot. And instead, Pele. He neflat be'ineinu. It turned into a Pele in our eyes. But then says David HaMelech, you know why? Because Zehayom asa Hashem. Because the only day he's going to come is Hayom in Bikolo Tishma. 408 wasn't a date of a year. 408 was a recipe of Teshuva, Tefillah, Tzedakah, Kol, Tzom, Mamon. That's the day he comes in Bikolo Tishma'u. That's the day of Nagila Venismecha Bo. Wow, wow, wow. This is too much. And if that's the case, at first glance, we thought the Tsar was talking about a date in history. No, 408 doesn't represent a date. It represents a recipe for the bringing of Mashiach. Tshuva, Tfilo, Tzedakah, Tzom, Kol, Mamon. That's the Hayom in Bikolo Tishmao. And that's the day we're waiting for, the day that Klal Yisrael can get together Ba'achdut and do a Teshuva, a Tefillah, a Tzedakah, to get to the Zot. That is Bishnat HaYovel HaZot. Tashuvu. That's when we're going to return. That's Bizot Yavo Aharon. When you have the 408 of the recipe, Teshuvah, Tefillah, Tzedakah, that's when Aharon is going to go back to the Bet Amidash, when it's rebuilt, when Mashiach comes. Bizot Ani Boteach, says David HaMelech. That's the Zot that he's relying on with Bitachon. Not the year. The recipe of 136, 136, 136, Tshuva, Tfilo, Tzedakah, 408, Ma'avir and Etroa, HaGizera, of this Galut, and we finally can see Geulah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is, this is, uh, this is amazing. And that's what the Zohar meant. In the year of Zot, the year that we can get to, finally, Tshuva, Tfilo, Tzedakah. The Hayom. Harat Hayom, Harat Olam, Hayom in Bikolo Tishmao. <laughs> but what's amazing is Rabotai, that although we embarked on something incredible tonight, really, this is fascinating, fascinating. And the other, the opposite is true. If you don't have the Tshuvat Vila and Sadaka, you don't have what is Ma'avirin, the Gezera, so take a look what happened in the year of Zot. When they didn't have the recipe and all they had was the year, instead of turning into a Geulah, what did it turn into? Destruction, massacre, Chamaniski pogroms. Hundreds of thousands of Jews murdered. Shh. We're waiting for that day. We're waiting for the day of Zehayom Asa Hashem. Hayom! Like what Mashiach told Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Hayom in Bikolo Tishmao. But it's very interesting. There's one more piece to this puzzle. One more piece. One more piece. A piece that's going to throw us for a spin. This one's coming from left field. A famous Midrash. The Midrash Shacharto. And this is a Midrash that tells us something that we heard already from many Ma'amare Chazal. That there might be Another understanding of the word bizot. Not a year, and not even the recipe of what we've been bringing till now. Truvat filaut staka, that was the Vart of Rabbi Herschel. Amazing idea. But says the Medrash Shachartov, Vizot ha Torah 
Asher Sam Moshe Ben Israel. You want to know what the real Zot is? Zot Torah. Zot, Bezot, Zu Torah, says the Midrash. And therefore, if we were to go back to all the Psukim that the Zohar commanded, crying out for the word Bezot, yes, you're right, it, it's not a year, it wasn't the year 408. But it was the year of Bezot, the year of Torah, the year that Klal Yisrael comes back to a Torah Me'ahava. A year that Klal Yisrael embraces Torah the way Torah was meant to be learned. Bishnat Hayovel Hazot. You want to know the Jubilee year? The year of Geulah, it's in the year of Zot, it's the year of Zot HaTorah. Then Tashuvu. Tashuvu. It's in the Zechut Torah that we're going to be taken home. Unreal. Unbelievable. Bizot Yavo Aaron El Akodesh. It's with Torah, the Zechuta Torah, that Aaron is coming back to the Bet Amigdash. Bibiata Goel Bayit Shalishi. Bayit Neeman. Bizot Ani Boteach. It's on the Torah that I'm relying. I'm Boteach in my learning. I'm Boteach in the Zechuta Torah. En Sigula Ka Torah. You have Torah, you don't need any Sigulot. It's Keneged Kulam Mamash. Including the Sigulot. That's the Bizot. Bizot HaTorah. That's the year that Mashiach is going to come. When Klal Yisrael can come back to an Achdut, like the way we had it, Ke'ish Echad, Ubelev Echad. Like literally it was by the original Kabbalat HaTorah. And we're coming up now to a Kabbalat HaTorah in a year that has a tremendous Etratzon. We all know the Gemaran Chelek in Sanhedrin. The Gemara tells us that Ben David is coming right after Shemitah. We're coming to the end of Shemitah year. I mean, come on. We went through a corona. We went through everything for heaven's sake at this point. What did we go through? We don't even have baby formula. What did they want from us? We got a Meshugana that thinks he's running. The, we don't know where the country is going. We don't know where the world is going. We're being told all these conspiracy theories that the next is smallpox and the health. Are, it, it, it's crazy what's being told to us. And we're supposed to stay normal in a wild society. It's the Wild West. And there's no shame anymore. Even sin lost its shame. And in these times where we got it up to here, and we're holding at the end of the year Shemitah, and the Gemara tells us right after Shemitah, Ben David Ba. And we're holding on for our lives. We're holding on to our kids by their hair so that we don't lose them. And it's at this moment that we're trying to figure out the final recipe. Bezot aniboteach. Whether it be Reb Herschel's bezot, of Truvat Filaut Sidaka, Tsom Kolumamon, or whether it be the Medrish Bezot, the Bezot of Ma'armare Chazal, Zot HaTorah. Maybe it's both. Maybe we need the Truvat Filaut Sidaka, but we also need the Torah that's Magne Umatzle to finally bring us out of this. And go home. Tashuvu, Ishalachuzato. That's the year of Zot. And that's exactly what took place in that incredible year of Zot. In the year of 408, in the year of Tach V'tat, The year that they thought Mashiach was going to come. Do you know what ended all the Tzarot? Maybe it was the Tshuva they were doing. Maybe it was the Tefillah they were doing. Maybe it was Tzedakah that they were doing. But even with that recipe, they lost hundreds of thousands of Jews. And the Gzerot that the Samach Mem threw on them, the Yitzhar Hara, took its toll in a big way. We're talking about rivers and oceans of Jewish blood that started in Ukraine. Tachvetat, the Chalmaniski pogroms, Ukraine. Ukraine. It's amazing. You know what stopped it? You know what finally stopped the pogroms? You know what finally ended the plague? Listen to this incredible story. The way Rabbi Sazaman Meltzer, Zechit Tzadik Lebracha, used to tell over the Misa. The Misa, that these two giants, Rabbi Shamshim Rashtrapoli and the Shach, 
Reb Shantran Astropoli, we mentioned, was the greatest Kabbalist of his generation. He was beyond. Reb Shantran Astropoli summoned the Samachmen. He summoned the Yitzhara, the Malchamavet. And he told him, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying to wipe out the Jewish people? You came at us with such prosecution. You came at us with such a terrible prosecution. You're trying to wipe out the Jewish people. What are you doing? You're about to wipe out Klalis. If this doesn't stop, we're losing thousands by the week. What are you doing? What is it going to take to stop this? What's it going to take to stop this Gezera? To stop you? And you know what the Samach Mem told him? <laughs> He says, Bezot Yavo Aharon El HaKodesh. You want to know the way in Bezot this is going to end? Al Yideh Shnei Bnei Aharon. There are two great giant Torah scholars in this generation. And the way the two sons of Aharon had to die, you have to die in order for this to end and Klal Yisrael to be saved. You and the Shach. That you are going to both die for the sake of Klal Yisrael and it'll stop me. It'll stop the Gezera. It'll stop the plague. But the two of you have to die. The two great Torah giants. Rav Shanshan Ashtrapoli told the Samach Mem, I can only talk for myself, but I can't talk for Rav Shapti HaKohen. I can't talk for the Shach. I gotta go ask him. Reb Shamshir Rashtrapoli comes to the Shach. I'm talking the Shach. The Shach on Shulchan Aruch. And he says to the Shach, listen, I'm trying to broker a deal with the dark side. I'm trying to broker a deal with the Samach Mem, with the Malchamavit. He said he'll stop murdering Jews. He'll stop the pogroms. He'll stop the plague. Klal Yisrael will have a shot at existing further. If... Me and you both accept the Gezera and give our lives back to Borei Olam, and we die. The Shach turns to Rabshan Ashtrapoli and he tells him, I need three days. He says, three days? Three days? They're dying by the day. Hundreds, maybe thousands, are dying by the day. He says, I need three days. Okay. He comes back to him three days later. And the Shach tells Reb Shanshan Ashtrapoli, let me explain myself. The reason why I needed three days is because I'm still not finished writing the Pirush of Shach on Yeridea. I'm not finished yet. And because of that, I needed to have three days to think this over. Says Reb Shanshan Ashtrapoli, what? You didn't finish writing the Shach on Yeridea? If that's the case, let the chips fall where they may. Klal Yisrael cannot survive without the Shach on Yeridei on Shulchan Aruch. And if that's the case, you continue. You keep writing. How long do you need? Another two, three months. Not two, three months. And for the next two, three months, for the next two, three months, the Shach wrote and finished. The Shach on Shulchan Aruch Yeridea, and finished his pirush. And right when he finished his pirush, the Shach and Reb Shanshun Astropoli both died. And in the year of 408, Tach Vitat, the massacres of the Chalmaniski pogrom stopped. And you know what brought it all to an end? Vizot HaTorah. Vizot HaTorah. You know what Vizot is? It's the Torah. More than even the Teshuvah, the Tefillah, and the Tzedakah. Yes. Kol, Tzom, Mamon, 136, 136, 136. They do equal to 408. And you need that to bring the Hayom. 
Hayom in Bikolot Tishma'u. Because if you don't have the Tishuvat Filat Tzedakah, you don't have the Bikolot Tishma'u. You don't have the Yom. Zeh Hayom. Ase Hashem. Nagil of Nismechabo. The day that Mashiach is going to come. But or more than even that, more than even that, there's a bigger Vizot. Vizot HaTorah. And that was the Torah giants that ended the worst period of Galut at that time in the years of Tachvetat, the two giants of Torah, but as well in the final, final moments right before the coming of Mashiach, at the end of the Shemitah year, which we're told that David, Ben David, is an Etrat son now. There's an Etrat son now that the Gemara tells us. That David, Ben David's going to come right after the year of Shemitah. And we already saw all the pandemics. And we already saw all the craziness that the world, at least, at least we think, all the craziness the world had to offer. Now's an Etrat son. Now we got to come to this final year. Bizot ani boteach. With the tshuvat filat tzedakah. Kol tzom mamon. But even more so, bizot ha-Torah. In the Zechut Torah, this Galut too will end. Thank you for listening.